Good morning and welcome to St. Philip Neri Church. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Every nation sees the glory of, of the star that pierced the night as we tell the wondrous story we are big in radiant light stars and stars from highest heaven dancing light of God's design shine upon the gift that's given word made flesh newborn in time every tongue shall sing the praises of the birth in deepest night he is healing for the ages he is christ our god delight he is of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dearest sisters and brothers, as we enter into this feast of Epiphany today, let's thank God for calling us here this morning as we continue to follow and seek Christ. As we enter into this Mass, Let's ask the Lord for a beautiful year ahead in which we grow more in faith, grow more in Him. For those times that we fail, those times we sin, let's ask God for His mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people, people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, you we adore you. you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. 
Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to all the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines on you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. In his days shall justice flourish and great peace till the moon is no more. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the river to the bounds of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the islands shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall save the needy when they cry, the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy and save the lives of the needy. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judah, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means among the least of the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good 
before we take down the lights and sweep up those pine needles and cash in those gift cards and visit now, the, 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 visit the exchange counter at Macy's or Penny's. The church now gives us one more blast, Christmas blast, to celebrate this feast of Epiphany. Epiphany means manifestation. It's God becoming manifest to all of us in the world through his son, Jesus Christ. Every year on this feast, we encounter a story that really defines all of Christianity, all of us. The story of pilgrims. Pilgrims that are all on a journey. Every one of us on a journey. We meet the Magi, outside, outsiders, Gentiles, coming in search for the king. And the story of the Magi kind of reflects us looking for that king ourselves, seeking him. This story today is one of the most mysterious ones in the New Testament. The gospel doesn't tell us how many of them there really were. One early Christian tradition actually told us of 12 astronomers making their way to Judea, presumably paralleling the 12 tribes of Israel or the 12 apostles. Of course, the 12 really doesn't matter, but somehow probably through the years because of the three gifts that were given to the baby Jesus, the number dwindled through the centuries to three astronomers, three following that star. Matthew's gospel is the only one that really mentions them at all. We really don't know how much more about them than that except that they were searching diligently for Jesus. They were trying to find the king of the Jews. Yes, I like to tell people their Herod, that Herod, their visit to Herod is the last time in recorded history that a group of men stopped somewhere to ask for directions, my dear people. But that searching, I think, his story is really all about like so many of us, on that quest ourselves, searching for the Lord. The Magi came in history asking a simple question, but it might be also one of the most important questions for all of us here to ask ourselves. We need to know where the newborn king of the Jews is. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? It's a question I think seekers are asking even today looking for Christ in our world, in our time, in our age. Where is Christ? In a world so often shrouded in despair, with not much hope at all, we want to know where the star is, where the hope lies. And as the wise men discovered, Christ may not be where you really expect him to be, maybe where you least expect him to be. Today, I think we will find him in so many places. For example, in the very land that tradition says that the kings came from Persia, as we know today, Iran and Iraq. In Iraq, you will find Christ in these very simple women who courageously live out a ministry there, the Dominican Sisters of St. Catherine of Siena. They fled from their convent one day because ISIS was coming and killing everyone in their region. They left immediately, and now they live in a tent, patiently, prayer, prayerfully praying and helping hundreds of refugees with their love, providing medical care, finding homes for the homeless, teaching the children, and giving hope to those who have no hope right now, you'll find Christ in them. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? Well, you'll find him in the ministry of Voice Town or Homeboy Industries, where priests and laity alike are teaching gang members how to change their life around, how to bake, how to clean, how to cook, how to balance a budget how to run a business. 
That's where you'll find Christ. In people that are trying to change people's lives, make them better. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? Well, Father Pat and many of his priest friends who work for Cross International, who fly out to different places every weekend to ask for money from the people of God to help those in third world countries, their preaching every year raises lots of money to help those in third world countries that are so struggling to just make it, to live, to have a home, to have fresh water, to learn how to also raise crops for themselves. These priests, like him, one of them, go out every weekend asking the people of God throughout America to give money to help those who desperately need help. Every time we see ministry happening to feed the hungry, those who need to be fed, like the Father Fred Foundation or Christian Neighbors here in Leonard County, or Salvation Army, whatever it might be, wherever we see people being fed, we know Christ is there, present. Wherever the grieving are being consoled, wherever the forgotten are being helped and remembered in his name, you're going to find Christ there. And today, people of God, how blessed we are because we are going to find God and experience him here in a little piece of bread that will come to us to nourish our souls for the journey, for the quest, in knowing him. You will find him as the Magi did, any place where light dispels darkness. All these days after Christmas, we may think that the presents have all been unwrapped, and it's time to get on with life again. But I want you to think about that. This day brings us even more, something more. Epiphany is the feast of gifts, little Christmas in our European countries. But there's more to the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. There's the gift of God's Son, Jesus Christ, the present of all presents. And there is an enduring gift of faith been given to us, in him. The Magi left Jesus, but I don't think they left his home empty-handed at all. They carried that encounter with Jesus in their hearts. They were changed people by that encounter. We should be too. Every time we come counter Christ, we should be changed. We should become different, better in our quest. We should not let the spirit of the season get tossed to the curb with the Christmas tree. These weeks, we have celebrated Christ coming into the world and into our own lives, personally. The challenge really is for us to keep that reality alive, to keep the star shining, so to speak, in each of our lives. The incarnation of our Lord didn't happen just 2,000 years ago, it keeps happening every day. It goes on and on every day in each of us who believe. We are called to be Christ to one another. Wherever you find the new king, king of the Jews, the newborn king of the Jews, we just need to look around at each other. Look at each other and look within. Christ dwells there. And let this gospel today stand as a reminder to every one of us what we've been given, and more importantly, what we all need to do still with our lives. The Magi were the seek, first seekers of Jesus. They were, and they aren't the last ones. We keep seeking him as our, ourselves. And as we begin this new year, we need to pray that those who are seeking Christ today find him in so many places in our world and that they see Christ in each and every one of us, wherever we are. Let's pray that this feast enlivens us in faith as we keep growing in him.
and seeking him. Can I have an amen to that? Amen. Amen. And as seekers of God, seekers of one who has given us so much and has loved us, we now stand and proclaim our great faith. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. and By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we now come before you with our many needs in prayer, asking for you to hear these prayers on this glorious feast of the Epiphany. That the church may tire, tirelessly reveal the glory of Christ to all nations and people who do not yet know him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the manifestation of the glory of Christ will enable all nations to also recognize the sanctity of each and every human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That missionaries may find new strength through today's feast and may enjoy the support of the Christian people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's people may more deeply discover the mystery of the Eucharist and worship the Lord as did the wise men of old, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may discover in their sufferings a manifestation of the passion of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may share eternal glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ron Fornowski, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, thank you for calling each of us here to Mass today and for all those that are watching on the internet today, our Mass. Continue to bless each of us during this tough, difficult time in our world and keep us following you, our star, as we continue to grow in faith and grow in you. Help us always to seek your Son, Jesus Christ, our living Lord. Amen. <laughs> child is there to lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping this, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the Son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and gold. 
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. We pray to the Lord for our good and beloved Holy Church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for all the nations. And, and, we, and when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with all the angels, archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end now we acclaim. <laughs> from the world's beginning are ceasingly at work so that the human race may become holy as you are holy. Look and pray upon your people's offerings and pour out upon them the power of your spirit that they may become for us the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest of love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed to the wood of the cross for our sake. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed upon the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, we celebrate his death and resurrection and look forward to this blessed resurrection from the dead. We offer you, O Lord, this holy sacrifice, this sacred victim. We offer you this victim who reconciles us to you. Kindly, compassionate Father, look on those who have called to share in this one sacrifice of Christ. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Be pleased to keep us always in the unity of mind and heart. Together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Walter Hurley, our Administrator Bishop, Help us all to work together, to work together for the coming of your kingdom. Until that hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph. With the Blessed Apostles, St. Philip and all the saints. And with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last, freed at last from the wound of corruption, we may be fully made into a new creation, and we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord 
be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share his time of peace by bowing to each other. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. We have seen his star in the east and have come with gifts to adore the Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. i 
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just a, a few little reminders for our week ahead. First off, to let you know, Peter still has his uh, 
his CDs available to anyone that would like to get one of the CDs from him at the piano today. Um, he's such a wonderful musician, and he's made this Christmas tape for everyone. So uh, they're up here today, and all the proceeds go to help our, with our, half of the proceeds go to help uh, with the blanket ministry here at uh, St. Philip's Neary. Also, our parish council nomination slips are today located at each of the pews at the ends. Please take a moment right now and nominate a parishioner to serve on the council. The drawing will be take place next weekend after the Sunday Masses. And people ask me, where do we put them, Father? We have two baskets right here in the front that are for the collection uh, on the weekend because we can't pass the basket anymore because of COVID. So there's two baskets right here for you to put those in with the collection monies. Uh, don't forget to grab a bulletin on your way out today. Inside the bulletin, you will see uh, an, an insert that will show all those that donated flowers in memory of loved ones for this Christmas that made this altar so beautiful. So thank you to everyone who made a sacrifice to bless us and see a beautiful altar for Christmas this year. Uh, faith formation classes will resume next Sunday, January 10th, after the 10 a.m. Mass. And that's all the announcements. I would like to thank Father Pat for joining us during the Christmas season. And God, hope, hopefully he'll be here more often with us through the, through the years ahead visiting us during the seasons. Because Father Pat, uh, during the holidays, is not asked to go out to preach for the Cross or National because uh, no parish wants him during the Christmas season or Easter season. So he will usually be here. In fact, the pastors probably do not want to see a, a visiting preacher come on those holidays. Um, so... Um, so thank you, Father Pat. Thank you all for coming here today and our many visitors here today as well as those watching us on the Internet. Thank you all for, for sharing this beautiful Mass with us today. God bless all of you in this new year ahead as we continue to seek Christ in our lives every day. Shall we bow our heads asking for his blessing? May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let's go forth now, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. That Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born Down in a lowly manger The humble Christ was born And God sent us salvation That blessed Christmas morn Go tell it on the mountain mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born.